Hey, I'm Johnny Christmas at uh, Eastside's Detroit 2013. Uh, I was the first one to, to perform all five of the lockpick challenges for the CTF, so we're going to do a video write-up for how all of those were taken care of. Uh, the first, the, the whole concept of the challenge was that you have a safe with a bunch of different locks inside of it, uh, and you have to get through all of them uh, within 20 minutes before security shows up and catches you, uh, at which point you have to stop, start over, or if there's somebody else waiting for their turn, you have to wait for them to do it and hope they don't before you can come back and get it. Uh, so the first challenge in this was uh, the stack on strong box safe. Uh, and so that's kind of daunting when you first come across it, uh, especially if you're just like an amateur lock picker, you go, well, I don't, I don't really know anything about safe cracking. That's a ridiculous thing to even start off on. Um, but uh, with pretty much anything on earth, Google is your friend. And so uh, first thing I did, as I went, I looked around on this thing. Um, no real markings, no model numbers, no information on it, nothing on the bottom. Um, only things of note is you've got your opener here, digital keypad, uh, some kind of panel here. Uh, and then at the back, you've got these four balls. Uh, I shined some flashlights in there. Really hard to see anything. Couldn't find much going on with that. Um, uh, if you pry this panel off, there is actually a cylindrical lock in there. Uh, those are notoriously difficult to pick. Uh, most people don't have a lot of practice with their, uh, with those. Uh, so that is one way you could have solved it uh, if you're good at that. I'm not. Uh, another way you could do it is brute forcing the combination on the lot on the safe. Uh, that would take you potentially, possibly forever, um, uh, unless you got it in the first few guesses somehow. Uh, also, there's a good chance that the safe has a lockout feature for too many failed. Uh, combinations and so that might be a thing that happens as well. Uh, what I ended up doing is getting on Google and doing a really simple search string of stack on, strong box safe, throwing some quotes around and vulnerabilities uh, or vulnerable or break in, something like that. Uh, and I pretty quickly came across um, a few uh, news articles on uh, safes that have known vulnerabilities that are being recalled because uh, people are using them as gun safes and they're easy to get into and kids are breaking into the safes uh, or you know toddlers are accidentally getting into the safes and getting guns out of it and shooting their siblings which is terrible uh, but it was interesting because a lot of them mentioned uh, a story of a toddler who did break into this specific safe uh, and got a gun out of it and I said okay well if a toddler can break into this there's something to it so I started looking around uh, uh, on YouTube, which is a great place to look for how-tos on just about anything. And I, in fact, on YouTube, found a video uh, of a three-year-old in his pajamas breaking into this safe. Uh, and so the easiest way to do it was that, and they do it by, uh, most people would have the safe on the floor in their home. Uh, and the idea is, if you jostle, if you jostle, I'll turn it sideways, if you jostle the safe enough, um, It'll, it'll uh, bump the locking mechanism open and open the door. Um, a lot of people were trying that for a long time. If you were up here in the CTF room, you heard what sounded like work drums going on. And it was people rolling the safe all over the place trying to get it open. Um, my trick, and I'm not exactly sure why it worked, and it might be completely irrelevant, uh, was if you have the switch bumped up against the right side but where it can't close anymore, I seem to have the best luck with that. Uh, it still takes multiple tries, tries for it to happen and a little finessing. Uh, I'm gonna try it right now and get this to open. And you only gotta lift it, it's, it's not a heavy safe. Definitely something a three-year-old could get up on the side like this and drop. And you just do it like that. Uh, I personally had better luck dropping it, just lifting the whole thing up and dropping it straight down. And there you go. So something, like I said, a three-year-old could do. Now if you had your guns in here or whatever, that's pretty horrible. Um, another thing you could have done is there's a little red button on the inside here. If you want to come down. Um, if you could pop this button uh, from the inside somehow, uh, that's also going to open the safe up. Uh, and you can get at that through uh, this hole is your best bet. Still, you would have to find something long enough 
to go through the inside of the safe. There was nothing lying around the CTF room that I saw that was that long, uh, but you sure could go to the store, get a wire coat hanger, something like that, uh, and then it take care of you. So once you had that open, uh, inside the safe was um, oh, another safe with uh, a bicycle lock around it. Put this up here. And so uh, a lot of these bicycle combination locks uh, are notoriously easy to open through various means. Um, one of the more professional means uh, is you can get uh, what's called a decoder tool, uh, or uh, a lot of people will use the metal strips from inside security tags that are on DVDs and CDs and video games, uh, and you can slip that strip uh, in between the numbers, and as you turn the number, eventually you'll come to the number that has the slot open for the lock to slide out, and you'll feel your tool dip in, and that's how you know you got one of the numbers. You just do that to each of the four numbers, and your lock pops open. Uh, this particular lock actually happened to be uh, to have protection against something like that, so you couldn't use that here. Um, another method that's real popular is if you put a lot of tension on either side of the lock like this, and just yank it with your hands, and start flipping through the numbers, uh, you can eventually, it's really hard, it's really hard, and then you feel one pop into place. Uh, and it's usually after you feel that one pop into place, uh, you turn it back one, and that's usually where the slot is. And so you just do that with both of them. Uh, with certain locks, you kind of kind of jump around the numbers before you find all of them, but eventually you get the lock open. Uh, this lock is also not susceptible to that type of attack. Um, another way to do it is if you push it together, move one number, pull it apart, and see if you can wiggle the number. Uh, if you can wiggle the number, you have the right number for that uh, particular position, and you move to the next. This one, again, not susceptible to that type of attack either. Uh, and so that really put a lot of people at a loss, because those are the three main type of types of attacks. Uh, the only other option, of course, is brute forcing, which requires you to go uh, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, or 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 3. Try every combination until you get to it. And we actually had a couple people doing that because they were out of ideas. Um, what I really liked about this whole lockpicking session uh, for the CTF was that it didn't require immense amounts of lockpicking skill or knowledge or some serious Google foo. It required... Uh, different types of thinking, a lot of thinking outside the box. And the trick to getting this lock off the outside box uh, was actually just pull the damn thing off. We can get it on the right side here. You wiggle the thing around, get everything in the right place. So now, you're down to this guy. Uh, this is actually uh, a very simple way for lock. Um, anyone with some basic lock picking knowledge, uh, a very small, a two-piece lock picking toolkit, or really, uh, if you play, for it a while, play with it a while, these are the kind of locks that uh, you can pick open with a couple of hairpins. Uh, really easy locks, they're usually found on file cabinets, things like that, uh, not secure at all. Um, I happen to have uh, my Jiggler set here that I always have in my backpack. Uh, jigglers are really good for opening basic locks like this. Um, but aside from my own personal tools, uh, this was in the lock picking village in the CTF, so a lot of lock picking tools were available for you to go and find and play with. Uh, I happen to just like my Jigglers because they're really quick. Uh, it gets the job done. I'm pretty good with them. So I'm just going to get my Jiggler in there. Uh, and the, and you got to find the one that fits. And the idea with Jigglers is that uh, they push all the pins around, and you kind of wiggle them, and hopefully you get all the pins in the right place as you're pulling out, uh, and it'll open up for you. So, it takes a little while, a little playing with. And there you go. So now that one is open. Inside there is yet another box with a lock on it. Now, 
uh, you figure, okay, it's another way for Locke to bust your jigglers out. Why would they do the same thing twice? Well, they didn't. Uh, on this one, you can get in there. Um, you can see that somebody has broken a key off inside of there. So you can't get anything in there. Uh, and so my first impression was uh, get in there with a key puller and get the key out. The key that's in there uh, is way too big for that lock. It's jammed in there and cracked off. You can't get a key puller in there to remove the key. Um, I was able to actually get that bit of key out uh, using a very tiny pair of needleless pliers that I got my hands on. Uh, and he got the key out, and then I just jiggled the lock open again, and that worked. Um, there were, there are also two other ways that you could get into the, this box without using that lock. Um, one was, uh, it's got an external hinge on it here. And so if you get a slim enough tool, something long enough, like, uh, like a thin lock pick, you can just push the pin all the way out of the hinge, and then open the box up that way. Uh, also... Uh, what I had found in the box is that uh, the lock was really installed really loose and uh, there was kind of a gap in there. And so what you could do is kind of push the top in and slide it left and right and you could pop it uh, right off the lip there. And so what I was doing there is just kind of pushing this towards the back of the unit to get it away from that lip and to the side and pops right open. Uh, and so that was the fourth one. And then inside of there was actually this piece of paper. And on this piece of paper was this. So not a lock at all. Uh, it's, a, it's definitely a cryptograph. Um, can you, you get all that in there so they can see it? Mm -hmm. So uh, I happen to rec recognize this immediately because I'm kind of a cryptography nerd. And, uh, but uh, a lot of you may actually recognize this from something you may have learned in grade school or... Uh, I, I remembered this one specifically from about third grade. It might have been in, like, in a, like a kid's cryptography book or something I was reading. Um, this is an old um, uh, Masonic cipher used in like two to 400 AD or something like that. And, and, and my facts may be wrong in that, but it's really old. Um, what's cool about it is it's definitely something, uh, because it's old, it's something you can do by hand. And uh, you, don't, you didn't need a computer to do this. Uh, and so, but by this point, I was running out of time. But uh, what I did is, uh, and they allowed it because it's something that would definitely be available to you, to you, for you to use if you were in fact breaking into a safe somewhere, is I just took a picture of it on my camera phone and then put it back up and security came by and took everything back. But I had the picture uh, and so I could go home and decode it there. Uh, and so I started working on it and we got some words out of it. Uh, but what we're finding is you could recognize some of the words, but some of the letters were definitely wrong. Uh, and we determined that um, if, you, if you go on Wikipedia and look up, uh, this is called the pig pen cipher. If you go on Wikipedia and look up the pig pen cipher, they've got the key there for it. Uh, and we determined that somebody had taken one of the four keys that are used for this and rotated it so you get the wrong letters. And so by determining which letters were missing, uh, were messed up, we figured which way the key was rotated. Uh, changed it around, deciphered it properly, and that was the last flag, and that was it. Uh, and so that's, uh, that's how I solved all five of the lockpicking challenges for the Detroit's uh, B-Sides 2013. I'm Johnny Christmas, and we'll see you later.